All right, UFC Vegas 87, a big night for the flyweights and possibly UFC 301. Let's get into some takeaways. Starting with the main event, obviously in hindsight, we saw the levels, especially later on into the rounds. Gazeev didn't have the cardio. He just wasn't ready for a fight against a guy like Rosenstrike. Early on, he looked pretty good. I thought he won round one. But then as the fight went on quickly, his cardio faded. He's sticking out his mouthpiece, like breathing out of his mouth, like really quickly. And like it just didn't look good, honestly, after round one. Rosenstrike was simply picking him apart just from the jab alone. The thing is, I don't want to pile on Gazeev because it was his second UFC fight. You know, it just kind of showed like, okay, he's just not ready right now. But in a sense, it was kind of sad because because you want to have undefeated prospects like Gazeev to kind of come up quickly. But sadly, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. That being said, it was a big missed opportunity for Gazeev because you get this main event slot, your second fight, you can get ranked now, you can kind of climb your way up. And not just losing, but really kind of gassing out and, and not really showing that fight near at the end. You know, it's not the best look for him. And how much is he going to improve into his next fight? You know, we'll see. It's a big turning point for him now. And shout out to Mark Goddard for figuring out the whole corner situation because watching it, I was super confused. I'm like... Did he say anything about his eye? Like he's kind of po pointing at it, but is it really bad? And then Mark Goddard cleaned it up and finished the fight like that. Then we go on to Pedro versus Petrino. And again, another opportunity for a guy to kind of make a statement and make some noise in the division. It was a super slow fight really up until the third round. Petrino was like, this guy's not on my level. Let me put it on him. Pedro was clearly off. It wasn't going to be his night. And Petrino, you know, took too long to kind of realize that. That being said, he got the win, he can move on, it just wasn't a statement. And the sad part is, the bigger story was Pedro retiring, and him talking about how he has no money still. If anyone's got any money on him, who's... <laughs> and I see people going back and forth about this, you know, he should just like not complain, or it's his fault, or all that stuff, or, you know, it's the UFC's fault. And I get both sides, but at the end of the day, as a fan... You know, it is sad to see, like, these are UFC fighters. This is the biggest brand in MMA. Seeing that for me was honestly just sad because it's like he put time in this organization. You know, he contributed. We have to remember, UFC has this huge broadcast deal, and a part of that is putting on a certain number of events per year. Those Apex events count. Without the amount of events they're able to put on, they wouldn't be getting that huge big money. Even the not known fighters, you're putting them on these smaller shows, they still earn some of that money. The thing is, there's no union or collective bargaining agreement, so it's just like... You know, they don't have to deal with that. But as a fan, why would you want to see guys in an organization that you love so much basically being like, yeah, I ain't got nothing? Like, you don't want to see that. But going back to the light heavyweight division and Petrino, because the division's not that deep, you know, he could be one or two fights away from getting a big name guy. Next up, Makaya versus Perez. This was a fight I was really looking forward to and sadly was a bit disappointed. It's weird to me because as good as Makaev's grappling is, his striking's also really good. And he was doing a great job in the stand-up in this fight. But for some reason, he was really just forcing takedowns and holding on for long periods of time when I felt he didn't really need to. And a lot of times, him holding on made him eat elbows. I feel like he could have used his striking a lot more, and also doing that would help him get better takedowns. And overall, even with that control time, he wasn't able to land too much damage or even get too many submission opportunities. So it was disappointing to see all that stalling when I feel like he didn't have to do that. And the one thing that a lot of us were thinking were, what if there were grounded knees allowed? Makaev would have been rammed with knees. Granted, the rule that's being progressed is not for when your knee is on the ground. It'll, that will still be in play. So even with the new rule, he couldn't have been kneading the head. But just imagine if he could have. The whole fight plays different. The thing is, though, with the current state of the flyweight division, he could easily be next, but should he be? And I know that's not how it works, but seeing that fight, I'm like, I don't know how you're going to fare against Pantoja. Like, that didn't give me confidence for you to beat him. Apparently, he was sick before, and I don't know how much that played a factor in his performance. Who knows? But there's always going to be something when you're in a fight, right? So... You can say that about so many bad performances. The thing is, though, would you rather see Makayev, a fresh new opponent, or Roy Val again, who just got dominated? And honestly, my answer would be Makayev. At the end of the day, he did his job. He got his win. I just don't think it had to be as hard as it was for him. Now moving on to the Umar fight. Again, another bout that I was really anticipating. And to me, the way this whole fight played out has everything to do with the very beginning when he got rocked. I think we would have seen Umar in the stand-up a lot more if he didn't get rocked early. Because seeing that, he was like, you know what? I don't want to risk it. I'm going to play the safe route, and I'm just going to dominate. Granted, that easily could have been his plan the whole time, but I think he would have been striking a lot more if that didn't happen early in the fight. But to Umar's credit, for the rest of that fight, he was completely dominant, and not just laying on him and controlling him, he was landing bombs too. But did that performance show he could beat the top guys in the Bantamweight division? Does that performance show that he could beat a Corey Sanhagen? 
taken. In my opinion, no. But props to him for still calling it out and still wanting it. Moving on to Schnell versus Ursag. It's funny because the further down the card you go, the better the fights were. It looked like this could be a three round war or it's going to end any second. And Ursag was really sitting down on his punches and then just slapped Schnell. And Ursag did exactly what he needed to do at this stage in his career, which was make a statement. I think the Moreno call out was great. I don't know if he wants that fight, but with the state of the division right now, I think it could work. But one thing that made no sense at all was what the ref said to Schnell after he got knocked out cold. I don't know what was worse, the punch or you landing on the canvas. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I'm going to get brain damage. And, and Matt Schnell's just sitting there like, bruh. He's probably still like messed up in the head. And you're like, oh, that was funny, eh? Anyways, great showing from Ursaic. Now, Oliveira versus Sopai. This fight was insane. This is the kind of fight that you're not going to forget either fighter, winner and loser. First of all, Oliveira so much bigger. I'm like, yo, how is Sopai going to deal with this? And then Sopai is the one that's wrestling and dominating Oliveira on the ground. Sopai is pressuring. Super technical takedown. I'm like, yo, he's looking really good. Then we go to the second round. Sopai looks like he's going to run away with this fight. Olive and Oliveira just stayed composed, got out. And then got mean. And then he almost finishes Sopai. And in a round where Sopai was dominating, Oliveira ends up almost finishing him. But the difference was, after that second round, one fighter looked like he was done and out. And that was Sopai. And then from that point on, Oliveira was just bullying him. And Sopai, what was scary was, he was looking away. Like, after he got hit with a one, two, you know, whatever, he'd look away, like, oh. And then come back, like, like... What are you doing? And the exact reason why I'm scared watching that is because of what happened. The flying knee that put him to sleep. And I'm thinking like for your UFC debut, okay, you know what? You lost, that's one thing. It was a back and forth fight. But to get slept like that and the way your body folds, like I don't know how much that changes you. We've seen fighters get knocked out early in their career and come back and stuff like that. But that was a brutal knockout after already a beatdown beforehand. It's tough to watch because he was like not defending himself properly. And even his corner was telling him, put your hands up, hands up. At least have your guard up, right? But because he's running away and looking away, he gets caught. That being said, though, an amazing war. Both guys made a name for themselves right from that fight. But the problem is Sopai, you know, how is he going to be affected from this? On paper, he has a bright future and he can come back from this. And I hope he does. And for Oliveira, one thing's having a perfect performance in your debut. And then it's another thing, and sometimes even better from a viewing standpoint, when you have a not so great performance and then you come back and do something like that. It shows that you're not just a front runner and you can come back from adversity. 100% the best fight of the night. And I can't wait to see what's next for both of these guys. And it just reminds me why talent wise, the band and weight division is the best in the UFC. Speaking of which, next up is Bashara versus Ahabi. Another great showing for band and weight. A lot of stakes for both guys. They're on winning streaks and trying to get into the top 15. And Bashara's undefeated and he looked good to start great kicks lots of volume but Zahabi was landing punches and when he did they were big but the main concern was lack of output from him Bashrat had a lot of variety he was mixing it up the thing is though damage comes first and when Zahabi at the end of a round lands a bomb that kind of diminishes your volume and I believe that's why they scored round two for Zahabi and the thing about Bashrat which happens a lot with undefeated fighters at times he wasn't the most disciplined super close fight big win for Zahabi now he's kind of starting to get into that mix and for Basharat, you know, he still has time to climb up. But it is not a good look when you're coming up undefeated and you lose like that when you're a massive favorite. Another young fighter starting to come back, Christian Leroy Duncan, now on a two-fight win streak. Aggressive, used takedowns, ground and pound. Overall, great performance from him. You know, not too many takeaways other than to keep going. He has potential, but we just got to keep seeing it. Then we have Klein, who had one of the craziest combos to finish a fight. Punch, elbow, kick, punches, kicks to the body, to the head, everywhere. And it was just beautiful. And again, we see young guys coming up, making statements, right? Winning is great, but when you get finishes like that, it's like, yo, who's that guy? Then we have Rajabov with a beautiful hook to what should have ended the fight, but unfortunately, he had to keep punishing Sawadi because the ref was saying to fight back when he was out like this. That's it. Like the ref saying, fight back. Ref, you fight back. You fight him back. You got to stop this fight. Anyways, overall, this card was really solid. A lot of great young fighters putting their stamp and making their mark. But sadly, for the bigger name guys on this card, it was fairly disappointing. But still eye-opening to see a lot of these young guys coming up. Let me know what you guys thought. And did Makayev earn the title shot? Peace.